Hello everybody, I am back after a very long hiatus. Um, long story short, a lot of COVID scares in the office, a few at home, excuse me, general anxiety, and really lack of 40k releases. Today I will be building the Miasmic Malignifier. Leave it to Chaos to have really hard to pronounce names, but I'm excited for this. This piece of terrain has some really mixed feelings. I feel like people either love it or hate it. I'm honestly a little in between. I love the idea of getting terrain. I love that it's a furnace. Uh, the lore is pretty cool that, you know, they belch thick clouds and nasty, but what they're doing is they're pulling up all the nastiness from under the ground and spewing it into the air. There isn't really any part in the Codex that gives solid lore for these, and I'm a little disappointed in that. Um, I'm sure Games Workshop has done some sort of study to see how much people read the lore pages, but there used to be like, here's a page for Typhus, lore. Uh, Lord of Contagion, lore. And that's gone in the new one. Uh, I or also wanted to do the Lord of Villarance, but they're sold out everywhere. So I'm still trying to get one. Hopefully in a week or so, I can do that. Um, so without further ado, let's get to building this. Let's take a look at the plastic. And I'm going to get the instructions open and out of the camera. Make sure this is all in frame. We're looking pretty good. Got a paper towel for any accidents. Got my trusty exacto knife, clippers, some plastic glue and some super glue just in case because this is some pretty tough plastic. If you've never worked with Games Workshop terrain, it's a noticeably different type of plastic than the minis. Um, it's just some random bit, but I don't know if it comes across in the camera. It's a different hue and it's a different kind of gloss. Uh, the mini plastic is softer and seems to take the plastic glue easier. So I made sure to have some super glue handy uh, just in case this didn't really like the plastic glue. Now it is a lot bigger than I imagined. It's on a 100 millimeter base. That's the same base as Mortarian. If you're a custodian player, it's the base of a Telamon Dreadnought. And I think it's the base of a Lord of Change. It's a big old base. So let's get a little bit of building going. I'll start clipping these off and I'm just gonna talk about the Death Guard Codex and some Crusade stuff. Ugh. Because I know you guys all love hearing my smooth voice talk about Warhammer and I like to talk into the void. Uh, before I do that though, channel related stuff, I broke 500 subscriptions over the holidays, so that's really cool. I appreciate that. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed and listens and watches me build. It's pretty awesome. Uh, I have, I got a new desk fan. I'm turning it off for recordings. I'm still recording with, you know, my phone. I got a mic and I'm working towards getting a good stream camera and some software to use with it all. Okay, so, I mean, this seems like a pretty basic terrain assembly. I'm gonna go in and try to get some mold lines off. Definitely work on all these little, oh man, that's tough. Hard plastic nubs, get rid of them as best I can. Onto the codex review, the key thing people are talking about, you know, the biggest dividing line, I should say, is the change to disgustingly resilient. Uh, if you are in any Death Guard groups, I'm sure the days leading up to the Codex, um, well, really months, there were rumors that it was changed, and just tons of them. And you know how the rumor mail can be. It was most unsubstantiated rumors, but the one thing that the rumor mill had right is that they were going to change it to try to speed up games. Whether or not that's happened is debatable still because the book's been out like a day. Um, 
But the original rumor was it was minus one to wound a death guard, which would be bananas. That'd just be way too much. So Bolter should be wounding death guard plague brains on sixes. That's bonkers. Uh, the rumors did prove to be right, but you know, a, even a wrong clock is right twice a day. The change is it went from a five up feel no pain, which I loved because there was nothing like, oh, you did three damage to my plague brain and then the stars align and he rolls three five ups and he's alive. Or just reducing the damage you took to a lot. That was, it was, it was great. It wasn't a fun mechanic, but it was a mechanic that I had fun with. Uh, I don't really know that many passive things like that are fun. Um, I do know that as much as it made me grin, it made my opponents very unhappy because they would feel like, hey, I made this tactical decision I took the time to think about it, and dice screwed me over. A one in three chance, and he spikes the dice. But really cool people get pretty upset about it. And I don't like that. I like when my opponents have fun. Um, and something running around with an info save and then a secondary save after that, yeah, I can get that's kind of annoying. Kind of like Space Marines re-rolling all ones to hit and all once to wound on everything, because the aura bubbles, that got changed right when night came out. Core only. So what it got changed to is minus one damage taken. And initially that sounds freaking awful. But consider that almost everything in the book, save poxwalkers and cultists, got an extra wound. I don't know about the vehicles, but characters seem to have gone up. The Plague Marines are now two wounds each. Um, let me double check that point cost on them. Because I haven't tested anything with these guys. Let's see here. They're more expensive by a little bit, but uh, I think it balances out. I've actually been playing Crusade a lot over the past year. Let's see here. So the biggest thing the minus one damage taken does is just laughs at Plasma. Plasma overcharge does absolutely nothing. It gives you plus one strength, sometimes plus one AP, but that extra damage is not going to help at all. D3 damage is now D2 damage. You have a third, ch a one in three chance of dealing two damage to a Plague Brain with a Power Fist. That's pretty swell. <clears throat> um, I don't know how it's going to work against, like, Melta and everything, or on vehicles, but it's definitely a really useful ability, especially on if you're running a ton of infantry. If you're running a bunch of Plague Marines and Terminators with three wounds, it's awesome. But it's not just the durability that changed. <clears throat> Excuse me. Get a glass of water. I hesitate to pause because I'm pretty sure I'll just ruin the recording. <laughs> the real big change that I did not see coming at all, it's actually the opposite of what I expected, is Death Guard as a whole is so much more punchy now. They are terrifying in close combat. Absolutely terrifying. Holy cow. Uh, and that's a lot of things going into it, but the biggest is basically everything got an extra attack. If not more. Um, shock Assault's gone. And I know that made some people sad. But then if you look at the Plague Marine sheet, they have two attacks base each. Champion has three. All right, that's pretty awesome, right? And then they changed the gear loadout so I can't run my seven-man squads of two flails, uh, two plasma guns, a champion with a fist, and then two bolters for basically extra wounds. But I can run a unit of seven with 
let's see here. A flag of corruption, a great plague cleaver, cleaver, a mace of contagion and bubonic axe. I haven't checked the new mace. Oh, it's it's pretty much the same. It's not bad. Um, and a blight launcher and a plague spear. And plague spears are twelve inches now, so they're a lot better. And dang it, I really hate how this thing keeps spewing out. Um, all the all the flamer stuff got the bump in range, so that's great. Plague flails. Oh, so uh, getting back to that. All the special melee weapons they can bring, they also come stock with a plague knife. And down near, let's see here, what's it called? There's a rule they have. Here we go, Vectors of Death. A plague marine equipped with two melee weapons has an attack characteristic of three. When you take a flail of corruption, you replace your bolt gun with it. So in the past, you'd have D3 attacks with a flail of corruption. When you charge, 2D3. Awesome. If you're fighting against Space Marines, you could spike that with Death of the False Emperor to do tons of damage. Um, now, they just have flat three attacks, always, with that flail. Here's the real kicker. The flail of corruption is no longer D3, it's just flat attacks. But each time an attack is made with this roll, make two hit rolls instead of one. A Plague Marine with flail of corruption now has six attacks, all the time. All the time. That's terrifying. The wounds don't spill over anymore. It's just six attacks. Um, it's one less strength, so it's only plus one, neg two, two damage, instead of plus two, neg two, two damage. Wounds don't spill over, but six attacks. And for one CP, you can make the whole unit's wounds spill over. I know, it's, it's a stratagem when it wasn't before. But consider that you also have a Great Plague Cleaver in there, and that's a D6 damage power fist. It's times two, neg three, D6 damage. Also, three attacks. Bonkers. So you could spike the dice with that and kill a potential 18 one wound models. And the reason that is so good, and I like it so much more, is if you're fighting... Uh, hordes of anything with a good save, like a, an invul, they fail one, and that damage spills over and no one else gets invul saves. Everyone else just takes the damage. So if you're fighting, say, custodes, and you spike a six damage with that strat up, that six damage goes through, it kills the first guy, and then does extra damage to the next, but they don't get saves. And your flails go off, your plague knives go off. If you've got the mace, they're flat three damage now. Uh, bubonic axes, plus two, neg two, one damage. It's all right. Uh, you can't run full blobs of just axe dudes for like ease. I used to run a unit of 20 plague marines with axes in a mastodon, uh, which reminds me. Plague Marines can no longer be taken at Legion Strength. And honestly, that's probably for the better. Because a blob of 20 Plague Marines with these new buffs would just be dumb. So 10 is the new max. And I'm willing to bet that... Ooh, excuse me. The same will carry over Thousand Suns, Chaos Space Marines. Oh, look at this giant mold line all the way around. I might just... I'm just going to do that later. I know the sound of this thing scraping is horrible. Hey, beans. Um, but I'm trying two units of five next Saturday. I've got a buddy coming over for a, a crusade, Sisters of Battle versus Death Guard. We are very excited. We're both isolating. We've both been tested several times. I'm so tired of being tested, but... I'm not going to stop, because every time I go to the office, there's another close encounter with the COVID kind. Let's see if that works. That kind of? I feel like you got to go around the edge here. Let's try that out. Just doesn't really feel like it sticks. That, that's better. I'm going to plop that on here, make sure it lines up right. Let's see how that comes out. Yeah, that's all right. Big chonker. 
I probably won't glue it to the base um, just so I can paint all this and then paint the base separate. Just to let you guys know. Um, they could still bring a plasma gun per five. All these options I'm listing are per five models. So one flail per five. If you bring ten, you could have two flails, two cleavers, a whole bunch of stuff. Two plague spewers, which are now basically plague weapon heavy flamers. Beans, come on. Oh, bean cat. One of my cats is coming for attention. Okay, so we've got those basics done. Let's do... Here we go. So, plague brains are great. Oh, god dang it, beans. Just sneezed on me. Uh, cultists still have uses, but I think pox walkers are really outshine them a lot. The big difference between the two is pox walkers can't perform actions outside of a specific death guard one. Where cultists are pretty much the exact same they used to be, uh, but they're not core. So they don't get any rerolls, and they don't have really any stratagems. They're just kind of there. Also, a new rule says you have to bring the same amount of core death guard um, infantry, I believe it is, that you have uh, cultists and poxwalkers. Because they have the keyword plague follower. Hmm, poxwalkers don't have it. What do they have? There's something for cultists and poxwalkers that... I'll just go to the rule. You cannot bring an army of just cultists and poxwalkers. I'm still getting used to the massive amount of special rules they have. Let's see here. Put for the back. Crusade rules, which I cannot wait to play those. The relics are pretty cool, but there are definitely some standouts, as there always are. Every codex has like that one good one. Here we go. You cannot include more plague follower units. Ah. So it's called Disease Minions, and it says you can't have more Plague Followers or Pox Walkers than you have Bubonic Astartes Core Infantry, which is Terminators and Plague Marines. So if you have two units of Terminators, one unit of Plague Marines, that's three Bubonic Astartes Core units that are infantry, so you can have three Death Guard Cultist or Pox Walkers. One Cultist, two Pox Walkers, three Pox Walkers. Um, cultists can be brought in blobs of 30, Pox Walkers 20. Cultists can have um, a Flamer, a Heavy Stubber, is that A Shotgun. Eh. With the extra output that Death Guard Plague Marines are going to be putting down, I think Cultists just kind of fall flat. Also, oh my goodness, at the amount that pox walkers can come back now. Uh, the dead walk again is gone, where you would just, like, bring them back somewhere at full strength, come, and the same thing with that cultist stratagem. Like I said, cultist strats are just gone. Um, now, <clears throat> if you remember, there was... Uh, and I think I have that old book right here. So I can do a bit of a comparison. Because I know pox walkers are kind of a selling point for this army for a few people. Let's see here. Let's see right over them. So yeah, they had the each time an enemy infantry model is slain by a pox walker in the fight phase, add one to the pox walker unit. Pox box walker unit. And then if it, they had to errata that to say if it goes above the starting, then um, you have to start paying for it. Now the rule says it cannot raise them above their starting point. And they renamed that to Curse of the Walking Pox, and it's no longer infantry, it's everything except vehicles and monsters. So if you kill a bike, if you kill an artillery, a beast, all that stuff can be brought back to life as a pox walker. Um, 
it's very explicit with or specific. They can be set up in engagement range. All, every question they had is answered. All the special rules are like a paragraph long, but it clears up a lot, and that's great. I prefer this kind of almost legal approach they've taken to these rule books to where they're writing them to try to reduce the amount of erratas and questions we're going to have. Let's see here. We got a whole bunch of pipes. Number 20. So you kill something that's not a vehicle or monster, you put a pox walker back. Actually, hold on. Ah, uh, yeah. One of its destroyed... One of the unit's destroyed models is added back. So if you are at full and you wipe a unit of, say, Orc Boys or something, or Grots, you can't go above your 20. Mindless Horde, they can't do actions. If they're in a Crusade Force, they can't get Battle Honors, and they auto-pass out of action. Fodder, they always pass morale, and they still have a 6-up feel no pain. So all that's pretty good. They don't have Disgustingly Resilient. They just have Contagions of Nurgle. I guess that's fine. Uh, they are Stock Toughness 4 now, though. That's pretty nice. Which, honestly, I think they might have already been. Just talking out my butt. No, they were Strength 3, Toughness 3. Okay. So, they don't have Ballistic Skill. I mean, why would they? Their weapon's the same. Their weapon skill 4 now. They have two attacks base. You don't need to have ten or more to get that extra weapon skill. That's gone. Um, and there is a one CP stratagem where I believe it's your command phase. You use it and you roll a d6 for every model that's missing from the unit. And on a three up, they come back. So I think that is amazing. Blobs of 20 pox walkers are going to be pretty hard to budge if you don't really designate some good firepower items, especially at T4. Now they still have the 7-up save, so you're not taking saves. Basically, you're always taking just your 6-up unending horde save. Um, but they're so cheap, so why not? And you don't really support them much. Typhus is still there. It gives them plus 1 strength, so they become strength 4. Um, I don't think he gives them plus 1 toughness anymore. Let's see here. Typhus, Master Poxwalkers, plus one strength. Yeah, that's it. Um, and they're not core, so they don't get any rerolls. Moving on to my favorite page, page 76. And my very, very favorite page is page 77. That's not just the holy number. It's because that's the page that Death Shroud Terminators are on. You aren't aware of a Death Shroud Terminator. That's a Death Shroud Terminator. Big, chunky boys, Plague Cataphracty. They're huge. Take a look at this guy compared to a 30k Space Wolf. Massive. Massive dudes. You may have never seen them before outside the Games Workshop website because they weren't that great before. They were D3 damage weapons that kind of hit if you invested the points to the spells and the buffs and basically hit them with every possible thing they could kill like a warhound but what in this book the old book couldn't if you buffed them up that much sorry 19 and 20 i'm getting out of getting off topic here so key notes for their profile three wounds you already knew that uh, if you were worried about them losing an invulnerable save, because if you notice that all the Space Marines lost Cataphracty Terminator armor and they just got, like, some dumb Relic Terminator armor, uh, they no longer get the 4-up because that's what Storm Shields do, which we don't have access to. These guys are still T5 with a 4-up and will save. So, already they're some of the dumb, tankiest Terminators in the game. I think that... The new Dark Angels ones are pretty much the only ones on par with them. What makes these guys so much better is their minus one damage taken. So three wounds, two up, four up, minus one damage taken. 
you got to hit them with a damage four weapon to one shot them, and even then they have a fifty percent chance to just shrug it off. That's kind of scary. Um, and then their profile is disgusting. Let me get this old book so I can see their old sad, stupid profile. I love the minis so much. Okay. Death Shroud Terminators. They were, you know, standard move four. Uh, weapon skill, ballistic skill three, strength five, T5, two wounds, three attacks. So, what did I just look at? Um, we did gain a movement. That, that move four was killer, and that was what really made Plague Rain Terminators, or Death Guard Terminators, so weak in some cases, is if you fail to charge them, your enemies just run away. Uh, we did lose that juicy strength five, and what that used to do is make them strength eight with their Man Reaper, which was just plus three, minus three, D3, Plague Weapon. So it was a Power Fist. A plague weapon power fist. Nothing to write home about except it looked super cool. Now, oh my goodness, it is still plus three, negative three. It's only damage two, so it's still just a power fist. Um, we're up to still two now, and now you subtract one to hit with it. So your weapon's still three hitting with it, and yeah, it's... Not too crazy, but it's got two profiles now. The other one is plus one, neg one, one damage, and two hit rolls instead of one. And you remember, way back when I said everyone got an extra attack. These guys are four attacks based. The champion has five. They have 13 attacks as a unit. If you're attacking some chaff and you decide to scythe instead of cleave, that's 26 attacks from three dudes at strength five, neg one, one damage, re-rolling once to wound. Their core, so they can re-roll once to hit if they've got a, a champion nearby, or I'm sorry, an HQ. It's basically every HQ gives that now. Um, and they don't really need that extra strength. Outside, let's see here. Um... Unless it is strength nine. No, even then, I I don't think there's many brackets where it would matter. So they have the contagions of Nurgle. Basically, the whole army does, which is if you're within X range, you are minus one toughness. So if they run up against a land raider, land raider strength eight, it goes to seven. They're wounding it on fours. The previous one was strength eight, hitting eights, wounding on fours. That, that negative one toughness thing is, oh, so good. So good. I'll put these big old pipes on right now. Why not? Let's have some fun. I want this thing to be table ready, because I'm not sure if I'm going to bring it in the first game of my crusade. I don't think I will. Because I need more narrative reason for it to pop up. Can't just be like, hey, it's some Death Guard. Oh, look, they've already planted a fortification, even though they just landed. Uh, oh, hey, look, there's even a... If you don't want to put the pipe on, because another one goes here, they've got some stuff under it, in case you don't like it. What are we doing here? Yeah, there we go. Uh, let's see here. 21 through 23, but that's... Yeah. So... I ran these guys, I did a tabletop test, um, I want to say a 50 power level crusade against my Space Wolves Crusade Army. I forgot a lot of the special crusade rules for the Space Wolves Army, but I did have um, three Death Shroud Terminators and the Lord of Contagion face off with three Lightning Claw, Storm Shield, Thunder Wolf Cavalry with Thunderwolf Wolflord. <laughs> Thunderwolf Wolf. Wolf Wolf Wolf. Wolf. And the end was the... Let me think. 
The Lord of Contagion was fine, completely unscratched. There was one, the Death Shroud champion was left, and there were no Thunderwolves left at all. No Thunderwolves and no Wolflord. There were bonkers rolls on both sides. But uh, what really cinched it was my Lord of Contagion Warlord had a ability that while you're within Contagion range, you don't get to reroll anything. You can't reroll hits, and you can't reroll wounds. And when I get to the relics, I'll talk about that. I think it's going to be the one to take. Now, the next thing with the Death Shroud Terminators that got b -b -b bonkers is their Plague Spur Gauntlets. They used to be a 6-inch range pistol. Now they're a 12-inch range pistol. D6 attacks, auto hit, strength 3, no AP, damage 1, and the champion has an extra. That's a lot. That's a lot of little attacks going out. And they're pistols, so you can still use them in combat. Hop out of like a land raider, burn some dudes that plague weapons. You know what? If your range, if you're close enough, those space marines are now T3. So you're wounded on fours, rerolling ones. They're going to fail a few saves. And there's probably some more shenanigans in there somewhere. Blight Lords, aside from getting an extra wound, an extra move, they lost the ability to spam um, combi weapons. For some reason, Games Workshop said you can only have one combi melta, one combi plasma. And that some reason is kind of obvious. It's because the kit comes with one of each. Oh, that, that did frustrate me. I generally ran them as um, axes and bolters because I didn't like to invest the points in a bunch of combi weapons. I did do the combi bomb once or twice. It was pretty cool, but I liked them to run in and just wreck stuff. That That's what I loved about them. Oh, hey, it, you can kind of angle this one however you want because hmm, it doesn't have a set way to go on. That's surprising. The directions don't say it's optional, even though it's clearly intended to be an optional part. So I'll move away from the Terminators. I cannot get over how often they are. Oh, their bodyguard ability is gone on the Death Shroud Terminators. Now, bodyguard, aura. It's specific. It mentions it as an aura because there are abilities in the game that shut off auras. We get a little plastic glue on this guy. And then I'll read that thing for you, everyone. There we go. Bam. Oh, plastic glue in my mouth. The scent. When a friendly Plague Company character, and Plague Company is like chapter, you know, you take um, a Mortarian's Anvil. Now, Plague Company is Mortarian's Anvil. When the character is with... Uh, with nine wounds or less, as with three of this enemy, enemy models cannot target this character with ranged attacks. So they are their own lookouts or mechanic. The enemy can be the closest thing. Like you could just have... Here is, let's say... This is my character. This is my guard. Or my plague guy. You've got all these space marines that are just, hey, we're gonna jack you up. You can't. Bodyguard within three inches. Deal with it. You cannot shoot him. Very useful. But it's nine or less wounds, so Mortarian can't get it. Yeah, that's a bummer, right? Wrong. Mortarian's disgusting. So disgusting. Starters, he's toughness eight. Yeah, he deserves it, right? Toughness eight Mortarian. Next, he has three freaking warlord traits plus one you choose before the battle begins it's any of them uh reroll all wounds with plague weapons he has a five up disgustingly resilient toughness eight 18 wounds four up invul five up disgustingly resilient um let's see here he has the aura for rerolls his profile still pretty similar Fox Freaks Bombs. I haven't really looked at how Lantern... It, most of his weapons seem to work the same. But being T8, 18 wounds, 4 up interval, 5 up feel no pain, with minus 1 damage taken, and he knows... two. He can cast 2 Psychic Powers, deny 3, so he can buff himself with Miasma. Um, 
all the things I've seen where he's being used in battle reports, he is uh, honestly the most durable thing in the game without having some sort of don't kill me in one turn, please mechanic. I've seen people theorycraft him versus the Nightbringer. Nightbringer. Um, Psych guy from Necrons. And who can kill the other one in one turn? Mortarian doesn't have any fancy rules like the Nightbringer, but he can do shooting phase, psychic phase, charge phase. It's kind of a iffy on shooting, where Nightbringer technically can kill Mortarian in one close combat phase, but it's still very unlikely, just because he has so many wounds and the minus one damage taken. While Mortarian doesn't get his invul, he does get protection from that minus one damage. Oh, so good. He's a beast. Oh, such a beast. Now, I am going to go way over to Boated Bloat Drones. You have probably heard someone in a shop call them Blight Drones, Plague Drones, or I'm trying to think of the other drones. There's too many Nurgle Drones. So the Death Guard ones, Boated Bloat Drones, um, you can still run them with Plague Spitters and whatnot, though I don't know if that's the best thing to do. The reason is, with the changes to the core rules, they can't fall back and shoot anymore. They can't just overwatch willy-nilly. They basically don't get to break all the rules and shoot everything for free. And that was kind of the reason you took Plague Spitters. Hey, you're charging me? Have some Plague. You, you didn't kill me? I'm going to fall back and shoot you again. And I'll let you charge me again. So Plague Spitters, pretty much the same. 12-inch range, though. The unit is now Weapon Skill Ballistic Skill 3. Oh yes, it's still a demon, so still has a 5 up, minus 1 damage taken, pretty solid. Uh, but then we look at the Flesh Mower, that used to be pretty dang fun. I mean, I loved it. I loved it being like, oh yeah, this thing gets 9 attacks, and it's strength, what was it back then? It was like strength 8, neg 2, 2 damage. It was just eating stuff up. Well, now... It's strength 7, 12 attacks, <laughs> neg 2, 2 damage. Um, just about every spread of the Death Guard Codex seems to have some sort of rule where each time an attack is made, make 3 roll hit rolls instead of 1. And I love it. Or 2 hit rolls instead of 1. Um... With Weapon Skill, Ballistic Skill 3... What is Ballistic Skill 3? Hmm, weird. The Heavy Blight Launcher doesn't look too bad. 36 inch range, Strength 6, Neg 3, 2 damage, Plague Weapon, Assault 6. BS3? That's hot. That's useful. That was just a horrible weapon, and now it's good. I'd shoot that. That BS3 goes a long way. Excuse me. Ooh. Got some of those classic Death Guard intestine pipes. Yeah. Right next to the Mephitic Blight Hauler is the Handy Dandy Plague Burst Crawler. One of the units that brought along the Rule of Three when a man named Don Hoosen ran nine of them in a tournament and won by just rolling up nine Plague Burst Crawlers to Flamers and laughing. Because no one could kill him, and he just sat on objectives. Uh, all the changes that they had in War of the Spider are stock. So that means they're... Well, for starters, they're BS3 starting. Um, the Entropy Cannon is D3 plus 3 Plague Weapon. And you used to have to spend a command point to do that. The Mortar no longer has a minimum range, but it is Blast. Uh, let's see here. No, it's not. It's just heavy. No, it's Blast. Um, but Death Guard have a rule where if you are... Oh, dang it. Where um, vehicles can shoot Blast 
in close combat and ignore the penalties for shooting heavy. If I remember that right, I'll have to double check it, but it it's it's a good choice now. It's, it's a really good choice. Uh, the mortar is still d6 shots. Um, there's a stratagem in it, do some mortal wounds, but the entropy cannons are solid. Real solid. Um, Mephitic Blight Haulers changed a little. They're also weapon skill plus skill 3, so you don't need 3 for that. Still minus 1 to hit in close combat. Um, they don't ignore moving and shooting heavy, because, you know, they already do, so that special rule is gone. Not, not too much has changed with them. Uh, Death Guard Possessed. That's something a lot of people are talking about. Uh, the Chaos Spawn. Again, I think there used to be a stratagem that gave them Disgustingly Resilient. Well, now there's a stratagem that gives them Disgustingly Resilient and plus one toughness. Toss that on the fact that they have um, four wounds and are Toughness five. So you've got a Toughness six, four wound model, minus one damage taken, only a five up save though. So, assault cannons will chew through them, but, you know, four wounds, that's a lot to chew through. They're pretty nice. They're dirt cheap. Um, I am going to be using these old Plague Ogryn models. I still need to do some work on this guy, but I've got three of them, and I love them. They're perfect for Death Guard spawn. Uh, those are Forge World models. I can't remember if they're still in production. Going over to the characters, because they changed a good chunk. The surgeon actually looks good now. So he's no longer just a space marine killer and that's it. Because in the past he was plus one to hit and wound against the Stardes. And that was kind of his only thing he had going for him. Now he has an aura that's um, Bubonica Stardes within, I want to say, six... Oh, geez, I completely lost track of... Yeah, that'll work. Get a 6-up, feel no pain. So, you know, it's not the best, but I can go far. Throw it on some of those Terminators. Is it only infantry? Oh, it's Bubonic Castardi's infantry, yeah. Those stupid tough Terminators, and you've got a real tough nut to crack. Uh, he also has the Tainted Narthesium, so he can heal... Uh, I'm sorry, that's the Revitalizing Malignancy. At the end of the movement phase, he can heal a Bubonic Astartes Infantry model whose unit is within three. The model regains D3 lost wounds. And you can only heal... That model can only be healed once per turn. That's the wrong thing. So those big multi-wound dudes getting a bunch of wounds back. Pretty awesome. Where's that stubby little... Here we go. Look at that showed of a pipe. So in my crusade, I have a Lord of Contagion, three Death Shard Terminators, and a Surgeon cruising around in a Death Guard Rhino. Or, uh, not Rhino. Land Raider. And... I mean, if that Rhino or Land Raider gets them to the enemy lines, it's It's great. Um, he still has a, basically a power sword, plague weapon, and a bolt pistol, and that's it. The Tallyman. The Tallyman was a dude you didn't see often, if ever, in competitive play. What he did was he let you re-roll all hit rolls, and each time you spent a command point, you would roll 2d6, and on a 7, you would get the command points you spent refunded. This survived through the erratas that nerfed command point regen. And the erratas all said basically every ability in the game, you can only get one command point a turn. This guy's, you could only have it proc once per turn, but if you got it to proc on a 3 CP strat, you got all three back. That has changed. Um, at the start of the command phase, if this model's on the battlefield, roll 2d6 on a 7 plus you gain a command point. So, the old one, people would see that, ooh, you roll a seven. Well, seven's the most common combo. That's not bad. 
while it's the most common combo, it's still like one in eight chance to get. That's out of a lot of combos. On a seven plus, not too shabby. Free command point. Um, and let's see here. It's no longer reroll all hit roll aura. It's choose a core unit within six until the next command phase. Add one to the attack hit roll. So that's pretty nice. Death of the False Emperor is gone, so no more. I know everyone was just thinking, ooh, Death of the False Emperor, but that's going to be crazy. Well, it's gone. It's just gone. We don't have it anymore. All the kind of random weird stuff has gone, and that seems to be the case across most books. Space Wolves lost their ability to have Ragnar Blackmane get like 30 attacks and kill a Warlord Titan in one go. Character Hammer is definitely dying. There we go. Man, this thing's coming together. Holding it, building it, it doesn't look so much like a something you get from Nurgle's adult store, but it feels like terrain. I might, I don't know, I like it. I like it a lot. Next, let's see here, we got you all, we got you, you. Big old pipe dude. Okay, so the Tallyman still buffs, uh, he's got a plasma pistol, that's it. And I guess he backhands you with his four attacks all the time. But because he doesn't have a plague knife or anything, which I forgot to mention, plague knives have AP. They're better chain swords. And you can take two plague knives for um, four attacks base. Although we'll check on that later. Uh, so the Tallyman still has a place. Buff save melee unit makes him hit better. There we go. That'll be pretty nice to counter any minus one to hit auras. And the free command points is pretty solid. The Biologus Putrefire. This dude was a shitlord. So if you knew someone who played Death Guard and was eyeballing termite assault drills. It's because the old wombo combo was you put 10 death guard, or 10 plague marines, biologist putrefier, and like a chaos lord in a termite, pop up, extend the range of all plague weapons on the plague marines by six inches so their grenades are 12 inch range. The biologist putrefier buffs their grenades to be, I think, plus one strength, two damage. And then you used a stratagem. Oh, and on sixes to wound was a mortal wound with him. You used a stratagem to let every single plague marine throw grenades. Another stratagem to give him plus one to wound, so now fives are mortal wounds. And they all chuck their grenades, re-rolling ones. Strength four, no neg, two damage. That's gone. Let's see here. Now, he still has the grenade buff. Uh, when a bubonic Astartes unit is within six, light grenades the model has are now AP 1 damage 2. So they don't get that plus 1 strength. But again if you're in grenade range you're probably minus 1 toughness so it balances out. Um, there is still the stratagem to increase the range of plague weapons. There is no longer the stratagem for everyone to throw grenades. But there is a stratagem that you choose three models those three models have grenades changed from grenade D6 to pistol 6, um, and they auto-hit. So it's not as good, but it's okay. It's 18 automatic hits, and you, you know, could use that in combat. Uh, let's see here. He still explodes, and his injector pistol changed. Now, let's see here. Each time an attack is made with this weapon against infantry, cavalry, beast, if you wound, it's D3 mortal wounds plus normal damage. So it's a 3-inch range pistol that does 1 damage plus potential, or, well, D3 mortal wounds plus a potential 1. Um, and he has a hyperblade grenade, which is basically a blight grenade with his own buff. So he's still pretty solid. Foul Blight Spawns, the epic, epic shitlords. 
Uh, I loved these guys. They're the Super Flamer unit, and I used to love just running three of them because they're everything I love about Chaos. They're random. Um, that's about it. I love random stuff quite a lot. So they had, and they they had I think a strength two d six weapon that was a strength two d six flamer. And what am I doing here? Did I miss a piece? Yeah, I did. I missed a big piece. Uh, that was neg three three damage, I believe. It was nasty. Like a knight could charge you. A knight would think twice about charging you because you could deal some real hurt. So that weapon has changed. It is still a Assault D6 auto-hitting flamethrower. It's now 12-inch range. It is also now flat strength 7. You know, take it or leave it, that's average. It's really great when you're like, oh yeah, this flamethrower is strength 12. Deal with it. It's neg 3 and 2 damage. Still very good. And he has an unholy death's head grenade, which I believe he used to give out. Now he just gets to use it once per game. Uh, basically a grenade 2d6 heavy bolter. Eh, it's alright. I can't see a time he'll be using that over the plague sprayer. But, I don't know. Okay, we got these two guys here. There we go. Oh, you know what I forgot is the Biologist Putrefier, the grenade guy, got Foul Infusion. This used to be a psychic power called Blades of Putrefaction. Now it's a buff. One Plague Company core unit within six of this model. Huh. Plague Company core. It doesn't say infantry. So you can do this to a Dreadnought. Um, I don't know why you would. If you make a melee attack with a Plague Weapon, an unmodded roll of six to wound is a mortal wound. So you used to cast that on someone that was plus one to wound and sevens were mortal wounds, making them sixes. Um, the other thing about the Foul, foul Blight spawn is he had a You Fight Last mechanic aura. It is no longer an aura, and it is the same as... Um, I think the Judicar choose a unit within three and they cannot be chosen to fight and they are not eligible to fight until all of my guys have already gone. So his old one, your opponent could pop a CP and counter it. The new one, they can't because the CP has to be used on a unit eligible to fight. Let's get this little weirdo piece on. So he's still pretty good. The Noxious Blightbringer was probably the absolute worst of the characters. He had a leadership aura. I think he let Death Guard or Plague Marines reroll advance rolls. Now he gives um, plus one to move. What? Oh, yeah. He just gives him plus one to move. So that's okay. And that's that's a six inch aura. Um, subtract one from combat attrition. Now, combat attrition is after you fail morale and you roll a one for each model in the unit, you'd make that dice roll. If you roll a two, it becomes a one. So ones and twos run away. Space Marines as a whole are pretty much immune to that. But this gets interesting, where if you're fighting something that's not immune to combat attrition modifiers, say it came up with Fenrisian Wolves, I killed five, they were at half strength, so ones and twos would run, with him around it's one, twos, and threes. That starts to make a real big difference pretty quickly. It was really useful. Uh, useful enough to take him over other characters? Mm, maybe. And then, if there's a Psyker within six of him, they're minus one to cast Psychic Tests. Again, kind of nice, but he's really situational. The plus one to move is pretty cool. Just because our army's so slow, 
but he's still kind of iffy. He's got a plasma pistol and his plague bell. Not really fantastic. Uh, the one thing they did do for all these characters, though, is they gave them a rule where three of them counts as one elite detached or one elite slot, if you'd like. So you could take a Foul Blight, Spawn, and Oxy, Springer, and a Surgeon, and it only uses one elite slot. That's great. I know a lot of Death Guard players, including myself, would take two detachments just so we could bring a bunch of characters. Um, and that's all the elite characters. Let me move over to HQs. I'll start from the front. Let's see here. And I'll also go over the worst rule in the book. Uh, Infernal Jealousy. You can only take one guy who's a lord. Demon Prince, Typhus, uh, Chaos Lord. Lord of Velerance, Lord of Contagion. They all have a fancy little rule that says you can't take another one of any of those. So if you have a Demon Prince, you can't take Typhus, if I'm reading that right, which makes me pretty darn upset. Now, I think if it had been you can't take another of that one, so you can't have two Lords of Contagion or two Demon Princes, but you could have a Demon Prince, and Typhus, and a Lord of Contagion. But again, I haven't seen this book really played a lot. Um, and with the changes to how punchy everything is, and it seems Game Workshop wants to get away from Hero Hammer, I can understand. Because the Demon Prince, while people are debating if wings are good or not, as a whole, he's a lot better. Um, let's see... His sword is plus one strength, making it strength eight, neg three, flat three damage. He's just, oh, he hits hard. That's about it. His move got nerfed a little. Uh, eight base, ten if he flies. He's a little more expensive. Um, he's just a beat stick. Typhus, I'd probably take over him every time. Uh, let's see here with 6 attack, potentially 12 if he does the Scythe. Ooh, that's nice. But Typhus is still a serious beat stick, and I would still take him hands down, even if I didn't have Pox Walkers. Is that the right side? Oh, we'll find out in a second. There we go. All right, Typhus, um, average stats for Plague Marine, six wounds and six attacks. Same with the Demon Prince has six attacks. Uh, going back to that, Malefic Talons only give an extra two attacks if you're wielding them, and they're just strength user, neg one, two damage. They're not as good. Definitely go with a sword or an axe. The axe being plus two strength for strength nine, neg two, three damage. Or the sword is plus one strength for strength eight and egg three, three damage. I don't know how much strength eight you fight, but it doesn't matter because that strength eight becomes, or I don't know how much toughness eight. That toughness eight becomes toughness seven with the sword if you're in melee range. So the X being strength nine only matters if you're fighting toughness nine, which I don't think exists outside Forge World. There's just no point to it, because there's never a time where you'll be in combat with a Death Guard Demon Prince and be at full toughness. It's simply impossible. And I don't know how many special rules out there buff toughness. There we go. This guy's coming together pretty well. Honestly, I'm, I'm liking it. It's holding with the plastic glue. Uh, compared to... A lot of the terrain Games Workshop puts out, this is pretty nice. Um, honestly, they've been improving on these smaller terrain kits. I think the big ones they produce differently, but all the Age of Sigmar terrain kits are pretty swell. This is definitely the same thing those trees are made of. Hmm. Yeah. 
I know the top view isn't really helping much with this, but I like it. Okay, big things that changed with Typhus. His scythe is... So it's a Mastercrafted Man Reaper. Doesn't really change much from the standard Man Reapers that everyone else has. You can have the plus three, minus three, three damaged. Oh wait, okay, yeah, that's different. The other Man Reapers are just like plus three, minus three, two damage. So his is plus three, minus three, three damage. So strength seven, neg three, three damage. Minus one to hit. Um, for a pinvol, Destroyer Hive is no longer a gun. It's now an ability. In your command phase, you select an immune within six. On a plus two, they suffer D3 mortal wounds. So he is a point blank smite for free. And then you could, you know, smite them. Um, let's see here. He's got reroll one's aura, adds three to contagion range. And oh, what is this? This model can be included in any Death Guard detachment without preventing other units in that detachment from carrying a Plague Company Contagion. Okay. And he can only carry a Contagion if it's Harbingers. So he is always... Uh, what is this? Harbingers. Chaos Lord. Chaos Lord in Terminator Armor. Big changes here. Their Toughness 5. Gain Disgustingly Resilient. They're now proper Death Guard lads. Downsides is they can't take the Death Guard weapon still. Oh wait, Chaos Lord can. Chaos Lord and Terminator Armor cannot. Can't have a Terminator Armor with Bubonic Sword. Bubonic Blade? Bale Sword. Uh, that stinks. Man, I feel like if I have someone in my army without a Plague Weapon, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Like everyone has Plague Weapons. Ooh, okay. Got that piece on. And. Is this even the right piece? Oh, no, this is some goop. This goop goes to 11. It's kind of a faint outline of the goop right here. So Typhus is still pretty awesome. He buffs, I think I already said it, Poxwalker Strength by one. Uh, the Chaos Lords, they're good. They're cheap ways to get that reroll ones. Um, they both have a four-up invul, so that's good. And I used to take them specifically for a cheap way to get reroll ones to wound. You don't need to do that. If you want a more thematic Death Guard army, you can take a Lord of Velerance or a Lord of Contagion. In War of the Spider, you could spend a command point to give them reroll one aura. Now they have it stock. Thank goodness, right? So on on the kit, now it's just a whole bunch of parts of gluing on more pipes and nasty bits all over. Part of me wants to wait because there's so much detail under these, but I gotta put it on. They line up so well. I've been trying to do a lot more 3D printing of things, uh, more complex kits, and the mad respect I have for getting it all to line up. I know it's plastic injection molded, it's a lot more precise than my ghetto 3D printers, but it's still awesome. Let's see, 34 is this guy, and 33 is this guy. So the Lord of Velerance, the new unit we got. Warhammer community said, this guy buffs demon engines, and that was quickly revealed to be a lie. It goes up. You know what, I'm gonna glue. He does not buff demon engines in any way, which combined with the Iron Clot Furnace being a single, uh, demon engine instead of all, which was the relic that gave, that is not 34, um, demon engines a four up invul save, yes it is. A lot of people kind of 
panicked about demon engines getting nerfed. They didn't, they're fine. I'll state that as a fact, you can quote me on it. Joe Builds It said demon engines are fine. What he does do is he does have a... Reroll hit rolls of one. Plague Company core within six. Unmodified rune roll of a plague weapon. Improve the armor. Unmodified rune roll of a six on a plague weapon. Improve armor pen of that attack by one. So you could have him and the grenade dude, the Biologist Putrefire, chilling out with some plague marines. Pop that. Bun three grenades throw. And those. Honestly. Are the characters core? Nah, characters, wait. Man, characters aren't core. Eh. Eh, that's okay. But it works on him, and he has a heavy 2d6 flammer that's a plague weapon. Strength 5, neg 1, 1 damage, so that can be buffed to neg 2. Pretty swell. And a plague claw, which I wish everyone could have. It's a power fist that's a plague weapon. And it looks cool. Um, toughness 5, 6 wounds, 5 attacks. He's a nice, kind of all-rounder. I'm going with Lords of Contagion right now. That's who I have leading my, um, Crusade. He has a Man Reaper, so you know that. Plus 3, neg 3, 2 damage, or he can scythe at plus 1, neg 1, 1 damage. Um... You know, none of them came with that until that weird, uh, Lord Festus dude, which I have. This guy. Boom! He came with a Man Reaper, and this weird ball that never did anything until now. Funny story, you can't get this guy anymore. Sorry, not yet. Maybe he'll come out on his own. So, this ball is called an Orb of Desiccation. 6 inch range, 3d3 grenade, strength 4, neg 1, 2 damage once per battle. Oh, that's cool. Um, so you can either take a Plague Reaper, the axe, which is times 2 strength, neg 3, 3 damage, minus 1 to hit. So you're rolling around with a pissed off power fist, uh, and a Plague Weapon. Actually, it's Old school thunder hammer. That's that actually exactly what it is. It's an old school thunder hammer, but it's a plague weapon. Beefy, especially when he's got five attacks. But I will almost always be bringing this dude because I love man reapers and the orb of desiccation is fun. He also adds three to all contagion ability ranges. Four up interval, reroll once. Uh, contagion starts at one, so with this guy it's at four. Then it goes to three, so it ends at six. And it says all abilities so often that it makes me feel like there's a ton of abilities, but there's not. There's a few. There's not a ton. I mean, there's a ton in the book, but you can't have a ton of them up. Extending three is pretty good, though. So when you face Death Guard, uh, you're going to have to really pay attention to that neg one toughness and how you position yourself. Think of it kind of like how you, when you charge, you have to worry about heroic intervention. You're going to have to worry about Lords of Contagion. Any, well, any Death Guard HQ, really, because they can take uh, Warlord traits that give them Contagion abilities. Uh, sorcerer and Terminator armor is there, but there's no normal Sorcerer. And Malignant Plague Caster is there. He's pretty much exactly the same. Yeah. I think that's most of the things I wanted to touch on. Oh, why don't I talk about this? The malig Miasmic Malignifier. I keep wanting to say Malignant Miasma Fire. I don't know why. So, it's a fortification, so you gotta bring your fortification thingy. Toughness 8. It's strength 7, but I don't know why that matters. It has no attacks. And its strength is the only thing that goes down. Maybe as I read the rules, it'll tell me. BS6. Okay. Um, toughness 8. 
12 wounds with a 3-up save. It does have Disgustingly Resilient and Contagions of Nurgle. So, Toughness 8, 12 wounds, minus 1 damage taken. Not too shabby. It's like a crappy Land Raider. Alright, this dude has half a page of special rules. Let's see here. Toxic Presence. Always counts the battle round number as four for the purpose of Contagion. So if you're within nine of this guy, which... Let's see here. It's the 19, the 28. If you are over here, you are minus one toughness. Can you even see that? Man, you can't even see that. Let's see, 13. There we go. Yeah. That's the range. That's a huge range for a minus one toughness aura. Um, all right, so that's pretty nice. When a Death Guard infantry is wholly within six, it gets like cover. Woo! Plus one armor save. Ha 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 ha. If you already had light cover, minus or subtract one from attacks to hit them. <laughs> Obscuring. Seated Gross. During deployment, you set this model up anywhere on the battlefield that's more than 12 from enemy deployment zone in any many models. After it's set up, you can then set up one Pox Furnace, which is this little guy, um, wholly within six and so and so far away. It's an obstacle terrain with the following features. Light cover, heavy color, unstable positions, difficult ground. If it's destroyed, the Pox Furnace is also destroyed. So really the whole purpose is it gives some cover. Kind of like um, the Nurgle tree gives demons cover, but that's pointless because they have a new will save. And where's there it is. It does a big old bad minus one toughness. So there's actually something I want to check on. Let's look at some of these contagion abilities real quick. I'm not going to go over... Uh, uh, I kind of want to. I don't know if there's time. Because it is late my time. I just got to upload this thing. Warlord Traits. So... Those are the basic ones. This is what I was looking for. The Attachment Abilities. Okay, so you can get the normal war Warlord traits that are like, you know, five up, invul or uh, feel no pain, reroll everything, or you can take, um, wait, yeah, you could take a Warlord trait from your Plague Company. My favorite is Mortarian's Anvil, because the Warlord trait is Gloaming Bloat. So, Gloaming Bloat, Contagion ability. While an enemy unit is within contagion range of this unit, they cannot fire overwatch or set to defend. Each time a model in that unit makes an attack, the hit roll and wound roll cannot be re-rolled. So, this guy, plus three inches to his aura range. Oh crap, that thing's drying. Plus three inches to his um, contagion range. Up to max 12. Turn four, this guy's got a 12 inch range of you can't overwatch, can't set to defend, can't re-roll hit, and can't re-roll wound. Let's scoot over to Stratagems, because there's one that I'm really curious about here. I'm going to get glue all over this book, I bet. All right, give me a second. Um, because it gives someone else your contagion abilities, but... I don't think it works on the furnace. I think it has to go on another character. Veterans of Long War is kind of there. It's now called Eternal Hatred and it's 2 CP. And it's not quite as good. A lot of mortal wounds going around. Um... Oh, 
Okay, here we go. Flash Outbreak. UCP. Use the stratagem in your command phase. Select one Plague Company unit from your army. This guy's Plague Company. If there are any other Plague Company units from your army on the battlefield that have a Contagion ability, that selected ability that the selected unit does not have, that's, that's a tongue twister. So if there's any units on the battlefield that have any Contagion abilities that this guy doesn't have. So this guy has Glooming Bloat, this guy doesn't have it. The selected unit has all of the same Contagion abilities. Bam. Until the start of your next command phase, units from your army count the battle number as one higher than the current battle number. Okay. Oh, dang, that's good. So. I gotta look up. If he's in a tank, is he on the battlefield? So if he's on the battlefield, you know, way over Dick Rand over there. 2 CP, I can give this thing a... 9-inch range. Minus 1 toughness. Can't reroll hits. Can't overwatch. Can't set and defend. Can't reroll wounds. Aura. Oh, wow. This thing's potent. I don't know if I'll ever take a standard Death Guard Warlord trait when I could take a Contagion. And that's anything. That's, if there's a model, bam, this guy, he gets it. That is going to be a very, very clutch uh, stratagem. I think it'll be popping up a lot. This guy goes right here. Spikes for everybody. Whew. Oh my gosh, so many more spikes. Oh, uh, there's a bunch of bells. I'm gonna do the bells later. Um, I'll glue them together and paint them aside because it's all just metallics and I'd rather just airbrush that. Also, the uh, Nurgle trees from Demons, oh, they have a ton of bells and they break off so much, so I don't even know if I'll put the bells on. Cool bits, though. Uh, you can all thank my lovely wife for suggesting I do a video. I told her I was going to stay up a little later and build this kit, and she said, you might as well do a video. It's been forever. And she's right. I was a little demoralized that I didn't have a Lord of Velerance to build. Such a pretty mini. Um... Oh, I forgot to trim these things. But... I kind of trail off. Uh, oh, I was demoralized. I didn't have one, and... I was kind of thinking about this, and I was going to build it anyway, and I'm pretty happy to be doing a video. All right, trim that. Um, let's see here. We can still pop our vehicles, so that's good. Yeah. If you hated when you killed a Death Guard tank and you're like, oh, I hope it doesn't explode, and then they said, haha, it does. The big difference is if that vehicle has nine or ten or more wounds, it costs two CP. So popping land raiders is expensive now. Bummer. <laughs> I loved to pop tanks so much. The Mastodon. Party bus, I called it. The uh, Plague Marine party bus. Oh, goodness sakes. That did not sound good. A blob of 20 Plague Marines, a bunch of cultists, and a bunch of characters pop out if and when the opponent finally kills the party bus. I can just make it explode. Whee! <laughs> ah, whoops. Um, so yeah, popping Land Raiders now 2 CP, but probably worth it. There's some, some combos that just look okay. Um, so there's one that is... Bolt Weapons gain Plague Weapon for 1 CP, and then one that is Plague Weapons gain 6 inch range. So you get a 30 inch range bolters that are Plague Weapons, but is it worth the 2 CP? 
Maybe, probably not. Uh, Blight Bombardment, oh, is different. Blight Bombardment used to be everyone throws a grenade. Now, I'll get a visual aid out. Uh, Blight Bombardment is in your command phase and your warlords on the table. Put a marker somewhere on the battlefield. Bam. Then, at the start of your next command phase, roll the d6 for each unit within six of the center of that marker. So you put it down, and your enemy has a full turn to get the hell away from it. They want to do that because on a two to six, they suffer a mortal wound. Um, on a seven, they suffer d6 because you get plus one to wound them, or plus one to the roll of their infantry, minus one of their character. It's okay. Uh, the other ways to spam mortal wounds are much, 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 much better. Um, and I'd like to mention one right now because I think there's a typo in here. Just because it seems too good. Way too good. Let me clip this guy out first. This seems broken as hell for one stratagem, or one command point, as many uses as you want. It works on any Death Guard characters, too. If it was Warlord only, it would make more sense. But any characters, and we can spam characters. Sure. Assassinate secondary. Prime against Death Guard. But we get our HQs, and then a potential nine elite characters. Mortarian and Lord of War. It works on Mortarian. Oh. Okay. So it's used in your command phase, as quite a few stratagems these days are. Let's get the big stuff done. Whew. Death Guard character. Oh, you can't use it on Mortarian. It says excluding Demon. So Demon Prince and Mortarian can't use it, and we don't have a Jump Pack Lord anymore. So we don't really have a fast way to get this around. But if you get stuck in your opponent's lines... Um... So you have to be a character, and you have to have something in engagement range. That model in engagement range suffers one mortal wound, and then you roll a d6. On a two up, the enemy unit suffers d3 more mortal wounds. If they're a character, um, excluding vehicle, it suffers d3 more wounds instead. So let's say, here we go. I'm in a nasty battle with this blade guard captain, and he's just, oh, I can't kill him. He can't kill me. We're both durable as heck. His two damage weapons only do in one to me. His dumb old shield keeps blocking me. So I'm going to spend a command point. Uh, I don't know, I have, what, five wounds? And he goes down to four. He just, boom, takes a mortal wound. And then, on the two up, hey, it's a five. He takes two d3 more. Hey, look at that. One, two, three, he's down to one. For one command point. Oh, places the character, then he just suffers d3. Fancy, three mortal wounds for one CP. Let's say it's a tank. Stop headbutting that tank, buddy. Oh, um, and that's not all. So, let's see here. Release the toxins in your command phase, Death Guard character that is equipped with a Relic of Decay. Uh, roll 1d6 for each enemy unit within 7. On a 2 to 5, they suffer a mortal wound. Hey, do you suffer a mortal wound? You do. So now you're down to, what, 2? That was fun. And then... Let's say he manages to kill me. I'll uh, eruption of filth. Which is... Uh, let's see here. Oh, on a 2 to 5... Suffer another mortal wound. Is that just one, or is that everyone in range? Oh, no, if it's a 6, it's D3. Release the toxins is... a huge aura. 7-inch aura. Um, so it's 2 CP. Eruption of Filth is 1. But they have a lot of ways to just nickel and dime you with 
mortal wounds, and I think the tally man is really going to have a spot in a lot of armies to generate a bunch of command points. A lot of the lists I've seen for Death Guard are command point short because they are taking more than a battalion or no battalion at all, like a patrol and mortari. Um, I saw one that was a whatever the heavy support one is, and Mortarian. He really seems to have become a must-take. I worry he's going to get nerfed before I can use him. Because <laughs> all I'm playing is Crusades, and named characters don't really have a spot in a Crusade battle. But to me, they could. You could have, like, Ragnar's Great Company. He's running around messing stuff up. But he can never get upgraded in Crusade. The only thing he can do is get wounded or die. Named characters are peak. I think it's a great opportunity to make your own character in your own sagas. Or in the case of Death Guard, your own plague. This is cool. Okay, so Crusade is where they're shoving all the cool stuff. Um... Chaos Boons are in there. If he kills another character, roll three d 2d3 and consult the Chaos Boon table. When you get three Chaos Boons, boom, Demon Prince. If you get two of the same Chaos Boon, spawn. Bummer. Uh, they've got the battle traits like everyone else does. Here is the coolest thing. I know I keep saying that, oh, I'm going to do this really hard. Let me get some dice again. So, they have a two-page spread on making your own plague for your army. And when you make your plague, you roll a d6 on the vector, infection, and terminus. And one of my favorite parts about this is... Joe's Death Guard Crusade Force. I'm Joe. I play Death Guard Crusade Forces. Yeah! I don't know anyone at Games Workshop, though the head of Games Workshop North America does know me, or at least... Mm knows my exploits. I shook his hand a few times. He said, thanks, you're a cool dude. I think. The last hobby expo. Um, he said that because I gave away... I won the costume contest, and then I gave one of the kids there my chain sword and my space brain helmet. And part of that reason was I wanted to make some kids just full year I wanted that kid to be so happy, because I can't imagine how happy I would have been getting something like that. And I'm pretty sure I made his parents jealous. Um, but also, to motivate myself to make something better, which I have, but I haven't finished it because there's no hobby expo. So I haven't really had the motivation. What the heck is this guy for? Oh, oops, didn't need to click that. So it shows that you can put it like this, um, but it also has it like that in the picture. And I don't know, I'll have to tinker around. Maybe this is, I feel like this would be the better way to do it because then your aura is larger. It's like a, in Age of Sigmar, there's an army called Edoneth Deepkin, and they have a terrain piece that's a ruined boat. You can either put the two pieces down together, or you can separate them and basically double the amount of the size it gives. Oh, dang it. So, spreaders of disease. Sorry I'm all over the place, I'm tired. Um... So you make this when you start your crusade, and then throughout it you can change it. So I'll make a quick disease. I get a five, I get a two, and I get a three. That is a hemorrhaging pitted bubos. So hemorrhaging, the first one is how you give them to the disease. The second one is what it does, and the third one is how they get rid of it. So hemorrhaging is, at the end of your movement phase, roll a d6 for each enemy unit within three of any plague carrier models from your army. Plague carriers are... It starts out as your Death Guard Warlord. 
but that you can give it to other characters. So it's pretty much character specific. Um, and you can have three plague carriers aside from your warlord and your army. I guess you could give it to like Mortarian or a Demon Prince. So what did I say it was? Five? Hemorrhaging. Um, you roll a d6. On a four up, they're contaminated. Okay, 50% chance. What does the two do? Pitted. Each time a model in a contaminated unit shoots with a weapon, subtract one from the number of attacks made with that weapon. Rabbit fire. Useless. Oh, that's mean. But you're within contamination range for this is three. If this guy's within three inches of you, it's already too late. And then a three to get rid of it, Bubos. End of your opponent's movement phase, roll the d6. For each contaminated enemy unit that has had every model move at least seven inches this phase, on a two up, they're no longer contaminated. Wow. So, to get rid of it, you have to move seven inches at least. And then it's gone. On a two up. Ooh, hey, you're fine. That's a good one. Uh, you can use command points to reroll, make them go up or down. Ones that I saw were, um, let's see here. So a lot of the vectors are okay. Weeping is a good one, uh, especially for like Lord of Velerids. When you make a plague attack, if they're in half range on a four up, they're contaminated. Um, melee attack makes them contaminated, killing a model. Uh, let's see here. In the command phase, everyone within three inches of the carrier on a two up. Six is an action, and it makes everyone within six contaminated. Now the infections. Number six is ravaging. When you become contaminated, you suffer D3 mortal wounds. At the start of your command phase, each contaminated unit suffers one mortal wound. So you could Plague Bomb, if this guy's got a bunch of units like really deep in lines, start of your movement phase, instead of doing anything, you do the action. Everyone within six inches is now contaminated and suffers D3 mortal wounds. Ouch. Then you pop two CP. They all suffer like one mortal wound. Ouch. Then you charge in. No, you can't do that. I was going to say I pop another one. Okay, so... Let's take a look. It's not all glued together, but it's a pretty straightforward build. I'm sure I just took like two hours to build it. I, I honestly like it a lot more holding it. Uh, the skulls here are kind of a throwback to the really old one, where they have cartoon eyes. The old Death Guard symbols were like that, and they changed them to be more kind of serious, and they're going back to the silliness, and I like that. I still have some old lines. They aren't that bad, honestly, on this mini. They're just big. Like, they're really small mold lines. That, get, that gets rid of them. But they're kind of everywhere. I'm not looking forward to painting this um, in the traditional Death Guard style. Hmm. Well, this thing has to be holy within six. I don't know if having that would be good. And... I kind of like it without it. I kind of like just the little spout. So I'll set this to the side. Um, what I am working on for my next video is how I paint my Plague Marines. So what I have so far, oh no, they're all out of order. <sighs> yeah, just to give you a little preview. Let's see here. You are dry brushed. Where is the one that isn't dry brushed? Crud. Yeah. is I'll be going through every stage of how I quickly paint Plague Marines. I have 87 Plague Marines. I love them. The models are great. I kit bash the heck out of them. Um, and 57 of them are painted. About 40 are based. So just a quick little bit is I do a brown base either primer or actual base coat. 
I get some light orange splotched on there, ruining a crappy brush. I do some green. Oops. I sponge green on. I then dry brush green on. And then I start the details. I'll start the chrome. After that, I go and I'll do a wash, like full body wash. Uh, I have I had a model out here. Hmm. I don't know where I put it. Well, full body wash and all sorts of stuff. Here we go. Whoops. South Park. Get all the details, the full body devil in mud. This guy's not even done because there's so many little bits on them. But it's a great way to assembly line it and I'll actually hold this up and I'll do the splotching to show you how to get to this step. How to get from here to here to here to there. It's going to take a little bit because, well, I don't know. It takes me a while to do all this stuff and then I'll have to do it all again on camera. Anyway, I hope you're all safe. I hope your families are safe. I hope you enjoy Death Guard as much as I do. The Miasma Malignifier was okay to build. It's terrain. It does look pretty cool, and I am going to start using it in my ter er, my crusade. I hope you all have a wonderful evening and a wonderful week. Thank you for tuning in.